Hello guys, it's Dr. AJ. Last time we solved the example on stability of retaining wall, it was at rest condition, so we used the K0 factor. This time we will be solving two examples, but it will have the effect of water and it will be on active earth pressure. So let's get started. Uh, as you can see, this is example two. In this one, we will solve two examples, example two and three. Last time we solved example one. From this example, as you can see, they are looking to find the horizontal stresses applied on this wall. So the total height is seven meter. It looks like we have two layers. The first is dry, gamma one is given. The second layer, it looks like we have ground water, 20 kilonewton per cubic meter, gamma water is given. Even if it's not given in place, it is in the reference manual. Phi, the angle of internal friction is given as well. So and they are looking for the sigma h horizontal stresses on the wall first and first is what normally do we write down what is given phi gamma one gamma two gamma water then first of all we find the k sub a the active earth pressure coefficient or sometimes called ranking uh this is basically from your reference manual please it is very important we're not going to be using the passive we're going to be using the active and there is the k naught for the at rest condition as we mentioned last time if they don't tell you what type of soil what type of pressure it is by default active earth pressure so in this case they did not say so it is active you're looking for the one applied on the on the surface of the wall you're looking for stresses the active stresses applied on the wall so we go to the equation, it's tan square 45 minus phi over 2. Phi is given 30, so that's going to give us k sub a one third. So again, what's the benefit of k sub a or any k basically, k sub b or k k naught or k a? It is basically a coefficient that converts the vertical stresses to horizontal stresses. That's why we're trying to find it here. We found k sub a, we go and find what horizontal stress. Horizontal stress is really simple. It's just the vertical stress times what k sub a, as we mentioned. First layer, please, always, always, always use gamma effective, which is the gamma total minus gamma water. Since the first layer there is no water, gamma effective is equal to the gamma total. So 15 is the gamma, it's given for the first layer. Three is the depth times one third. So this is basically is going to give us 15. Why one third? Because basically this is the case of A. 15 times three, this is the vertical stress. One third, what makes it horizontal. So we're gonna end up having 15. From here to here, 15 kilonewton per uh, meter squared. Now we go to the second layer. Now we have water. So gamma effective is basically the gamma saturated or the gamma total minus the gamma water. So gamma one times H1. It is for the first layer because we are trying to find the stress here at this point. So it is basically the stresses that comes from the layer one and the stresses that comes from the layer two. We add them together. So sigma one H1, it is from this layer. We multiply it by K sub A to make it horizontal. Plus H2 is from here to here, it's four meter. Why gamma two minus gamma water? Because we want to convert it to effective. This gamma two is saturated and K sub A will be multiplied by the effective. It's not gonna affect the water. You cannot use K sub A with water. That's why it is used only with the soil. The effective water will be calculated alone. So gamma two minus gamma water will make it gamma effective. We multiply it by the H2, which is four, it's gonna make it vertical stress. We multiply it by K sub A, it's gonna make it horizontal. So. We do the math, one third is K sub A, which is, we just found it here. 15 times three, it is basically, three is the first layer, 15 is the density of the first layer. Four is the depth of the second layer. 20, it's given, and it's basically the density of the second layer, the saturated, minus 9.81, the density of water. It's gonna give us 28.6 kilonewton per meter squared. This is the distance from here to here, this is the horizontal stress that comes from the soil alone. Now, we need to find the stresses that comes from the water. So since the first layer has no water, it'll be all zero. And then it will start from this point at depth three, going to the seven. So from here 
to here we will have to find the stress that comes from the water since k sub a is not going to work here because as we said this is water the vertical stress is equivalent to horizontal stress it's always gamma water times the depth of water gamma water is 9.81 4 is the depth so that's going to give us 39.24 and now in order to find the horizontal stress the total on this wall that comes from layer one and layer two it is basically this stress horizontal stress plus this horizontal stress so from the first layer is 15 and there is no water from the second layer is basically this is the the pressure that comes from the soil plus the pressure that comes from the water and it's going to give us a total stress of 67.8 so sigma h total is 68 approximately and that's going to give us option a so now example three in the example two we find the total stresses in this example uh, basically they're looking for the forces the horiz total horizontal force and its location from the figure below this is basically the figure this is basically what we found last time so those are all stresses now it is required to find the total force applied on that wall and its location very simple very common in the FE and the PA exam so First, uh, the first thing we do is basically find the total force. In order to do that, it is basically, we need to calculate the areas. Those are basically stresses, stress, depth, depth, and this is stresses. The easiest way is to divide the shape into one triangle, second triangle, and then we have a one rectangle here and find the area which is really simple. So the first one is basically area of triangle. So half from the equation, three is the depth, 15 is basically the stress. This is the first area. Area number two is rectangle, four is basically the depth, 15 is basically the width, which is the pressure. So we're done with this one. And third one, again, another triangle. So half from the equation of triangle, area of triangle, four is the depth and 68 minus 15 this is very important because 68 it is from here to here the stress and we're trying to find that length from here to here for the area three that's why 68 minus 15 because from here to here is the 15 so that's going to give us basically a total of approximately 189 kilonewton per meter so and you can use kilonewton alone because it is per unit depth. It is per unit depth. That's why it is up to you. You can keep it kilonewton per meter or kilonewton. So now the total is basically, we find the total forces applied on that wall. From that, we're going to find the location for each one. So now we need to find the location. The location is really simple. We take a moment on point Z. And then that's it, it's always force because the area, as we said, it is a force. So it's force times the arm, force times the arm, and force times its arm. So really simple and really easy. So you put it like area one times its arm, area two times its arm, area three times its arm, and that basically you add them all, it has to equal the total force times its arm. So 189, this is for the total force. We just found that, right? and we don't know the location of the total force and that's what we're looking for here in this equation 22.5 this is the force from this area right times now the arm since we have a triangle profile so the centroid is basically one third from the uh, the base of the triangle and then you add to that the depth of the second layer so that reaches to the to the point z and then we go to the rectangular section area two is or the force two is 60 times the centroid is basically half the rectangular length which is since we have four so it's half the four and then the final one area or force three is 106 we times the the arm of the moment which is basically from the centroid of the triangle which is one third from the base times the the length of the triangle so it's basically from here to here one third of that length 
And if we're taking moment that way to this point, it'll be two third. And then we will add the three for that left because we are taking it here. It doesn't matter the point Z really. You could take it here, you could take it here, you could take it here. It doesn't matter really. It doesn't matter where you take it. It just, you have to be careful with the mathematics. That's it. It's really simple, but please pay attention to it. And this is very common for the PE and the FE exam. So we do the math. And that's basically is gonna give us an arm for the total force of 1.98 meter, almost two meter from point Z. And since the total force is 189 and Y is twos, that's gonna give us option C. Uh, with that, thank you very much and see you next time.